So we're looking at chapter five, which is um, risk and return. So risk and return is um, a topic that assumes that investors have a behavior in investment such that the risk attached to the investment is inversely related to the return. So like the Phillips curve, the relationship that exists between return looks like this. So the higher the risk, the higher the expected return. So we need to understand that investors could be risk averse, they could be risk seekers, or perhaps they could be indifferent to risk. <clears throat> so if it's a risk seeker, they'll follow risk. So meaning where there's higher risk, they will seek to invest with the assumption that the higher the risk, the more they return. Is the risk others? These ones will follow as at all costs, they will avoid uh, risks. So, they only want to associate themselves with less risky portfolios. So, this is how the pattern is with the different types of investors. <clears throat> so, the expected return is simply given by the summation of the probabilities times the returns. That is how it goes. Expected return is simply given by So it's simply given by the return and the associated probability. So now we're going to look at the different types of investments that we have respective to different uh, business cycles. So we have business cycles that undergo these, have a boom, which exists at a peak. Then when the economy is contracting, it goes into a recession. If it exceeds more than a year, it's called a depression. And when it oops, survives this phase, it will start recovering and going into the recovery phase, causing the economy to expand and entering what is called an expansionary phase, then we go back to the what? To the peak. So the states of nature are simply the seasons within which an investment will survive. Now, <clears throat> you must also understand that risk is quantifiable. The relationship that risk has with its return is measured by what is called beta. Beta. So the higher the beta, the higher the risk that is involved. So investors are deemed to be rational beings, always wanting a higher return for a small investment. So the term return or expected return is actually used interchangeably with mean or average, which is simply the value or the mean value of the associated probability of the possible events. So when we weight that, we get what we call our expected return. So risk, by definition, 
is simply the chances that the actual returns that we intend to have deviate from our intended or expected. So it's simply the exposure that we have to a loss. That is what we call risk. So we're going to hover around these terms risk, which will be measured in terms of the standard deviation and the variance. Return, we're going to be looking at the expected uh, mean value, the expected return. Then the percentage of the deviation between the standard deviation and the return is what we're going to call the coefficient of variation. CV, which is simply given by standard deviation over the expected return times 100. So a higher CV simply implies that we have a higher risk. So given two portfolios, what would you pick? It depends. I ask you, you need to describe it as follows, okay? Depending on the type of investor. If it's a risk averse, they will avoid risk at all costs. It's a risk seeker, they'll be attracted to risks at all costs. So you need to really understand what I was talking about. So far we together? Yes. All right, so I'm trying to take my time so that you can appreciate um, the concepts. This is one of the most survivable topics. Now I'm going to look at four key parameters. Portfolio, expected returns, portfolio, variance, portfolio standard deviation. So I'll look at two assets, asset A and asset B. So we have probability 0 0.5, we have probability 0 0.3, we have probability 0 0.2. The total probability must add up to one. So maybe the states of nature, we can have a normal, a boom, and a recession. So here we have maybe 500, or so 100 kwacha in a normal for asset A, a 200 kwacha in a normal for asset B. And here we're given 500, so asset A versus, then here we're given a 400, asset B, and here we're given negative 200, so asset A, negative 150, so asset B. So we want to calculate four things. Number one, the expected returns for each. Number two, the standard deviation for each. Number three, the coefficient of variation, that's number four. Then we'll also be asked the portfolio expected return. Supposing that there's a 50% investment in each that is our portfolio, standard deviation, then maybe the covariance as well, then the correlation as well. So all these will be asked and maybe the portfolio, standard deviation. This is a very stuffed question. So we'll start with asset A. <clears throat> so the way I'll do asset A is the way I want you to do asset B. 
So how do we find the parameters that have been asked? Okay, let me do this. Maybe I can do all of them together. So we have probabilities, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2. Then we're given us return on asset A. What did we have? 100, 500, and negative 200. and negative 200. So the expected return is simply when we multiply the probabilities times the returns. So probability times the return on A. So here we're going to have what? 50. Here we're going to have what? 150. Here we're going to have what? Negative 40. So let's sum up what are we getting. Expected return on A is 160. Okay, those who are here doing lunch, what follows next? We subtract the returns. And as expected returns. Okay. So 100 minus 160, we get negative 60. And we square it. And multiply it by what? The probability. So what is 60? squared times the probability what are we getting I let my calculator so you do well do to assist so that we move quickly So 60 times 60 times 0 0.5. So here we have 1800. I'll start with the first one. Okay, the gents can continue with this one. And the ladies, the last one. So what do we have here? What Sorry, Mr. Collins. Uh-huh. Uh, so we ignore the negative. When I it, found negative eighteen hundred. The negative comes out when you square it. Oh. If, if you don't put it in the brackets, it will be negative. So calculator is in board mass. All right. Thanks. Okay, five hundred minus one sixty is three forty. Then what do we do? We scale 340 and multiply times 0 0.3. What do we have? 34. 84, 68. 680. And here, what do we have? Negative 200, negative 160. What do we have? Negative 360. So what do we do when we square that? And we multiply by 0 0.2. And 5, 9, 20. All right. Then when we add,
everything up, we get 62, 300. That's a variance. 62, 400. And when square root this, what are we getting? Square root 62, 400, what do we have? Quickly. Is it 62, 400? Help me. I don't know if I can. Yes, it's 62,400. And then the square root is uh, 249.79. Pardon? 249. Mm -hmm. 0.79. 0.79. So maybe we just say 0.80. I don't know. 799. Also 780, yeah? Yeah. So how do you find the coefficient of variation? Standard deviation over what? The expected return. What do we have? One point what? One point five six. One point five six. Okay. One So we go to <clears throat> returns on asset B, 200, 400, 150. 150, the same uh, probabilities are the ones that we're using. <clears throat> if you want, you can bring them back here, 0.5. 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Quickly, let's find the expected return. What do we do? We multiply. We multiply, correct. So what are we getting here? 100. 100. Uh-huh. 120. Mm -hmm. 30. 30, yes. Mm -hmm. When you total up, expected return for asset A or asset B this time. What do you have? 190. 190. Next, what do we do? We subtract 200 minus 190. So what do we have here? That's 10. 10, then square it. That's 100 and times 0 0.5. That's 50. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then 400 minus, that's 210. Uh -huh.
then 210 we square it, mm -hmm. then we multiply by 0 0.3. Which is? 13 to 30. 13 to 30. Mm -hmm. Then negative um, 150 minus 190, mm -hmm. which is neg negative 340. Mm -hmm. We square that. Mm -hmm. Then we multiply by 0 0.2. Mm -hmm. 23. 120. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we sum up that. We call it the variance when we sum up. We square root it, it's a standard deviation. When we divide by the expected return, we call it the CV for B. Let's calculate in that order. So it's 36,400, which is variance. Mm. So this is what? 36,400. 36,400. Uh-huh. And square root it. 190 190.79. And ninety point seven nine, uh huh. We divide it by the expected return, but we have one point zero. One one point zero zero. So which one has more risk between the two of them? It's A. A has a higher risk. The higher the CV, the higher the risk. So which one is riskier? A. <coughs> and how do we find the covariance? We go now to calculating these three important columns. Um, we'll apply these columns and that's expected return for A times the expected return for B. So here we have 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Then we turn this column here. See, these are key columns. You need to take note of them. So this column, this column, and this column. These are the ones that are needed. So here we have what? Negative 60. And there we have 340. Then we have negative 360. Then here we have 10. Two ten negative three forty. And we multiply these three together and sum up for the variance. So what are we getting here? Zero point five times this times that. What are we getting here? Negative 300, is it? Yes, yes. And here are we getting? Oh. 
And here, twenty four four eight four four eight, and you sum up if it's called the covariance of what A and B. What is the total? Forty-five, six hundred. Forty-five, six hundred. Is anyone lost behind so far? Am I a little bit fast? Have we left anyone behind? And Bella, are we together? Yes, I'm following. Uh, Francis, are we together? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Then we have what we call the correlation. Correlation is simply given by standard deviation for asset A, standard deviation for asset B, over the covariance of A, B. So covariance gives you direction in which your assets are moving. If you get a negative, they're negatively related. So this is a standard deviation for asset A. So 249.8. Asset B, 190. One seven nine over correlation, which is what forty five six hundred. What are we getting? Efficient of correlation. What are we getting? One point zero four five. One point zero four five confirmed. Yes. We'll see one point zero four five. All right. Now we can also calculate what we call portfolio expected return. So remember I said each of these ones, investment was done 50, 50%. <clears throat> a portfolio is a combination of what? One or two assets. So expected return for the portfolio is simply the weight for asset A times the return for asset A plus the weight for asset B and the return for asset B. So you'll be given the weight. Sometimes they say 60% was invested in asset A, meaning 40 will be in asset B. Okay, so here it is 50 50. So here 50% times the expected return for asset A, 50%. The expected return for asset B was what? 190. So what do you get? 175? What do you get? Three, is it? Yes. So this is what we call the expected return for the portfolio. All right. Then we also have what we call 
the variance for the portfolio. Variance for the portfolio. Hi, Collins. Are you able to go back to the screen, the previous screen? I just want to check something. Yeah. Okay, please. thanks. That's fine. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So how do we calculate the portfolio variance? I'm sure you've seen it uh, somewhere. The long formula. How do we find the portfolio variance? Those who've been studying. So portfolio variance, by the way, measures the dispersion or the variation of the volatility of the returns of a portfolio. It aggregates the actual returns given um, a period of time. It's calculated using the formula weight of asset A times the variance of asset A plus so it's given a weight for asset A, or asset one, whatever you're using, multiplied by its variance, plus weight for asset B, squared, times variance, plus to weight asset A, weight asset B, and the covariance of A, B. So what was our weight for asset A? It was 50%, right? Right. What was the variance for asset A? It was 62,400. I'm not squaring this because I'm getting the variance. I was getting the standard deviation that I squared it. Are, are, you, are you following me? Yes. So don't ask why I haven't squared there. If I pick this one, 249.8, I'll square it to get back to the same thing. And variance for asset B, 86,400. <clears throat> then plus 2.75. Times 0.5. Remember, the 0 0.5 is coming from the fact that we are told that the investment was 50 50. If it's 30 70, you follow that order. Are we together? Yes. Okay. Then you compute after multiplying all these. You compute <laughs> what you get is a variance when you square root it, it's called the standard deviation. All right, so this is as much as they can ask regarding this topic at hand. I've simplified it in the most basic manner. It's a tough. Sorry, so the... Mr. Collins. Uh huh. Covariance A, B, isn't it 45,600? Over and say B, you're the one who calculated it. You gave us here. Is it, that, the 1.045, uh, isn't it? The correlation. Oh, okay. Thank you. What was the covariance? It is 45. 45, 600. 600. Excellent. Thank you. You're following. Thank you so much. 45, 600. Hey, so
that is the thing, then you square root it to find the standard deviation. Now, <clears throat> sometimes you may be given just the returns for asset A and asset B, and you're given you are not given probabilities here. So the assumption is that we have equal probabilities. If there are three, you use one third of each. If there are four, 25% of each. Are we together? So let's go to this exam paper. It's for last year. We are given stocks from 2010 to 2015. And the returns are as follows. What is the return of each stock from 20? 10 to 2015. <clears throat> what probabilities do we use? What probabilities do we use? 0 0.2. 100 divided by 5, which is 0 0.2. And in one person was following. Everything I mentioned was very important. So 0 0.2, then you do each of these returns, you get your four marks. Sorry, I think I'm a bit behind. I said, if you're not given probabilities, you assume the equal probabilities. So we have period one, two, three, four, five. We divide 100% by five. So there are four, we divide it by four. There are three divided by three, you apportion the probabilities equally. Is that clear? Yes. So this will be your homework. I'm just leading you through to see that I've taught everything. All right. Then assuming 50% of stocks were invested in this company and 50% in there, what would be the realized return on the portfolio. So we are looking at the portfolio return. Easier. What is the standard deviation for each stock passing from 2010 to 2015? So if you find the variance and standard deviation, then which of the stocks performed better, both in terms of the return and the risk? back your answers with computations, 25 max. So this is where most students should survive. This is a question you should not really hesitate to pick up or answer. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Yes. All right. So it is one topic that does not depend on any of the underlying uh yeah, 